beautiful morning. It's supposed to get into the mid 70s today. Still feels hot for around here. So what I did is I took all the lumber we had cut yesterday and just laid it all out. We still need to cut the jack studs for each header and then the cripples. So all the little stuff around each header. But the general layout of the walls is here and I had enough to get going on that wall too. So I did build this thing in a 16 foot leg <laughs> and I'm afraid this is gonna be too big of a beast for Unless I get like five guys to help me lift with these three heavy headers and then if it's sheeted, I'm considering cutting it here um, at 11 feet and then just having a five foot section and that way we should be able to lift both. But I think what we'll do is we'll lift from that end and come this way and then if I can get five people, I will. Otherwise, I'll cut it. But this I'm going to build in 12 foot sections. Except for the last piece will be about eight. So but there's aren't there aren't very many headers. This will be the heaviest section, but I'm gonna cut it somewhere right in here at twelve feet so it'll flip up into place. Anyway, getting underway. What I did here was I squared this, lined it up to the base plate line where it's gonna flip, and then I screwed a board here and one over in that corner and then put screws in here so this thing's anchored it's not going anywhere it's squared it's sitting where it's going to flip up into place and then i'm running i'm setting my boards against it and building against it and uh, it's not a big deal if there's a little bit of gapping in there like a eighth of an inch or so you want a little bit of play there and you can it's all going to close up with sheeting and I'm going to anchor them together and a top plate is going to tie them all together and then inside the drywall is going to all time. So a little gap here is not going to be a big deal. Um, if there is one. I cut these down to 12 and then I went in and I marked using my plans and the markings I had under here. You can't see them right now. Um, <clears throat> So they look like this. I just marked where windows go and so forth. Like that. So that I have two points of reference. And then I'm also measuring off the end just to triple check. And so I've got my my door opening here. And I'm using my big square. I, I measured it all out on this and laid it out on this base plate. And then I took the top plate and I lay it next to it. And I'm just using this big square to straight line it so everything should stay where it needs to be here's the window opening the king stud the jack stud and then <coughs> i'll come in and drag my long 100 foot tape along here and mark my 16s so this whole wall will just flow with 16 since it's one big open room over there we'll mark them from the, the wall corners that come in. That's one reason I mark, marked where the walls come in so that each room has 16 on center. Again, these aren't meant to be how-to videos, but just in case you're wondering what I'm doing and how I'm laying it out, this is just how I learned to do it and a few things added in from videos I've watched and stuff. So it's worked for internal framing of homes and I'm hoping it works for the external framing. I don't know where my son is. It's almost nine.
12.30, four hours of work, and we got the whole row done. Um, we've got them pinned into place with these, just screw two screws in the ground, two screws there. That way we can just take these out before we put the top plate on and after we sheet it. Um, a little blood, the first of the blood shot. Shot that nail. I've been doing a good job of keeping my hand back, but we were in a hurry here at the end and I put it close and the nail kicked off of something and shot into my thumb. So that hurts. <laughs> so here's the window of the mudroom laundry. Um, down here we have window above the kitchen sink and then the front door and then the four big living room windows that'll look out here at that view cemetery I'll probably be buried in some. okay thumb repaired I think hurts like a bugger it's pretty deep rip with a giant flap of skin flipped over and a lot of damage under there. I don't think I hit the bone, but that'll make framing and I'm working for the next two weeks painting the rear. <laughs> We're moving now. One more header to build and I think we're good for this whole wall. Go ahead and lower yours. That red line, the red line. So we bought this, well Brandy bought it, because I said get the biggest chalk line they have because the small ones we normally use and I've always used just weren't cutting it for these long things. But this thick line, you see how thick it is? It's just so much better, especially with red chalk. I mean, it just lays down a, a line. That's a 60 foot line all the way down. So if I recommend anything, <laughs> upgrading it's the chalk line. We're done. <laughs> so all this needs to be covered? Yeah, we need to put the major tools in there. We got one section left, but all in one long day. It's 7 o'clock now. Start at 8.30. The three-hour delay in the middle. We've got master bedroom window down there um, first bedroom second bedroom window and the last bedroom will go there and this is all open living room and family room and kitchen and then the hallway in the middle mud room and giant pantry and master bedroom big walk-in closet master bath Huh. Yeah. Tomorrow morning we'll finish that off and then we'll start sheeting these. They're in 12 foot sections except for that massive 16 footer. And then we'll flip those up into place tomorrow, hopefully. And then hopefully quickly build these walls. There's just one door in the middle of each, each end wall. So. But we did quite a bit today. Time to clean up, go watch a movie or something. Hmm. I'm tired. My thumb hurts.